so I'm here today to talk to folks about IPLD and um, what we've done with this historically, uh, what we're doing with it now, and what we're going to do with it in the future, because we've made a ton of progress in IPLD. The first time you might have heard of IPLD could have been several years ago already. It's a project that comes out of IPFS. The shared prefix IP is not a coincidence. And um, we've really grown the project a lot from its earliest beginnings as this thing that came out of IPFS. So I'm going to talk a lot about that transition. A uh, quick recap, IPLD stands for Interplanetary Linked Data, and it did grow out of IPFS. And our goal with this is uh, when we started building IPFS, we were building this thing to make files shareable in a decentralized, like spread around the world sort of way. And some of the lessons that we learned while we were doing that is my UI is giving us black boxes all over. Can I make Zoom not show Zoom overlays? Is that better? Hopefully nothing important shows up in that part of the screen. Okay, sorry. Um, the goal of IPLD is to make specs and libraries that make it easier to develop interoperable decentralized applications. So taking lessons we learned in IPFS and trying to generalize them and make them available to more people to use to build their own cool stuff. So a million years ago, IPFS was just, just this thing that stores files and makes them globally available, which is really cool and really hard, but it was just for files. So the first step of generalizing this was um, IPLD started as being this thing called DAG-PB, which is short for Directed Acyclic Graph Based on Protobufs, uh, which was a way to describe large blobs of binary data and link together into tree structures and, and so go from there and be able to address those tree structures in this globally content addressable way. But it's really only good at that point for uh, addressing blobs of binary data. And maybe application developers might want to do more than that. So this is the big um, dawning moment for what IPLD is really going to let us do. IPLD is nowadays about structured data. So by this, I mean something that's like probably vaguely recognizable as pretty similar to JSON, uh, a dynamic format which you can use to store any data you want in a structured, useful way that you can build applications around. So specifically, when I talk about structured data and this data model in IPLD, we're going to have concepts like list and map, very familiar, right? Concepts you probably want when building your application data structure. The data model knows what strings and integers are, booleans, all of these common things, null is in there. And uh, slightly more than JSON, we also have the ability to talk about binary byte sequences, big large blobs, and links, by which I mean the CID structure that you're probably familiar with from IPFS already. So with this general data model concept, IPLD is no longer just about uh, file systems and opaque blobs, it's about structured data. This is something that we hope people can use to build their own application logic. And we hope that we can give people IPLD libraries which can traverse this structure and do stuff with it. You can think of this as kind of like an AST, an abstract syntax tree, but it's kind of without the S because this is Kodak agnostic. There's no single syntax of serialized data that you need to worry about. The IPLD data model can actually be connected to DAGPB, like we talked about earlier, or plain old JSON or other formats like Seaboard. And uh, really any codec that you can imagine can be plugged into this data model. We even have bridges to other content addressable systems like um, Bitcoin, Ethereum, and uh, really awesomely Git. As long as it has a hash, we can link to it. And as long as we can define a transformation from that serial data into our data model, we can traverse it and do stuff with it. So what kind of stuff? Lots of stuff. The most common thing is just to have a library which can traverse these data structures programmatically. That's cool. We've also built higher level features on top of this. For example, something called selectors, which is a declarative model for making traversals happen. I'll get to that more later. Um, some features called advanced layout schemas. These will all have more slides, but in general, what can you do with the data model? 
build applications that are based on structured data and want to be decentralized. So first cool feature, an example of a thing that we can build now that IPLD has the data model is something that we call IPLD selectors. Selectors are a machinery for declaratively specifying a way you want to walk over another tree of data. And the selector is evaluated doing that walk and selecting any data that matches. These can be created themselves with declarative documents that are still just IPLD structures. So you can draft them in JSON and it's just fine. And these are something that are built for uh, a limited power of expressiveness, which is useful because you can actually evaluate these selectors in a very low trust environment. One of the purposes of selectors is you can draft one of these up, send it to some other computer in a network and ask them to evaluate the selection for you. They could then stream back data that matches and you could evaluate the selector yourself as well. Since these are non-Turing complete and have limited power, you can do this in a relatively safe way, even when you don't necessarily trust the person sending you queries, which is kind of cool. We're using features like this to develop new data transports, like GraphSync. I'm already running out of time and I have 8 million more things to talk about, so I'm gonna go real fast. We have a concept called ADLs. This is short for advanced data layouts. Long story short, sharding is now a feature of IPLD. You can implement your own plugins for how you want to shard data and make it appear as data model nodes. So like the same maps and lists. And this lets us have transparent pathing even over really large sharded data structures. This is something that IPFS web gateways have had for Unix OS v1. Now we've generalized it and made it into something that you can use in applications with your own special logic. Selectors work over this, it's kind of cool. We also, for when we want to supercharge our own development and skip over a bunch of manual data validation, we've implemented a schema system. <laughs> IPLD now has a schema language. You can use the schema language to define types that have semantic behaviors, structs and some types, unions, enums, things like this that you're probably familiar with from other types of systems you've used as a program. And combined with this type specification in the IPLD schema language, you can associate a representation clause with this type clause. This describes how this information should be transformed in and out of the data model, and thus how individual codecs should proceed to represent it. By making these things separately tunable, <clears throat> we believe you might have some really cool features in your future. Types also have a data model interface themselves, <clears throat> meaning you can still run selectors, traversals, and write other generic code against data that's processed with schemes. You can use these any place you would use any other schema language. The coolest thing about these, we feel, is that schemas are optional. They're this thing that builds upon <clears throat> the IPLD data model, but they're not strictly necessary. Now, what's cool about this is it means you can use the schema system for feature detection. If you have a document which in the data model, or say this is written in JSON for clarity, you have a list and it just contains the number one and the number two. You can match this against a schema that has some named type that's a list of integers. Clearly this matches. You can also match it against a schema saying it's a struct with two fields and a representation of tuple mode. So in general, you can use this kind of feature to structurally match on data and add types without having to embed the schema in the document and without necessarily having to make the document unreadable without the schema. You can also use multiple schemas to attempt to match the same data and use this to construct feature detection. We're very hopeful that this will let people build decentralized applications in a flexible, evolvable way that may never have been possible before. We've also got a bunch of really cool new tooling which has come out to this recently. We have syntax highlighters, courtesy of one of my fine colleagues. We have cogen systems, which are appearing in Golang. These are in early alpha, but if you want to try it, it's pretty cool. Come try it. We have schema auto derivers. <clears throat> this is something that is actually so cool, I barely understand it. This is again coming from a fine colleague named Rod. Uh, something that's cool with this optional schema system is you can take data that has no schema previously associated with it and still infer a structural type which describes it. So people have been able to build 
tools that do this automatically. This GIF animating over on the side is such a tool taking a look at a large dump of data from the Filecoin network and automatically inferring schemas for it. This is kind of cool. I can't wait, honestly, to see what people do with this. We even, the list just goes on and on, have bridges to GraphQL. Why not? <laughs> Another colleague has built the system, which is a mostly one-way bridge from IPLD schemas to GraphQL. IPLD schemas are somewhat more expressive than GraphQL, so there are some interesting details to mind with this, but it is letting us write IPLD schemas and use GraphQL visualization tools, as well as submit GraphQL queries against APIs, which then transform that data into IPLD queries and do the thing. This, this is just so cool. Long story short, come build applications with IPLD. Cool stuff is happening over here. And I'll leave you with a bunch of links if you want to know more. There are specs repos where I think probably most of our interesting development goes on. There's also docs websites here. The development team on IPLD hangs out in IRC. This is also a bridge to Matrix if you're a fan of that sort of thing. And if you want to bug me elsewhere on the interwebs, at Warp Fork is usually my handle. Find somebody with that name, it's probably me. Maybe. It's the internet. I don't know. Good luck.